Hi, I'm Jen. And I'm Brandon. We have a flock of, I guess, six at home, counting all of them. And we started our free flight journey with our collectus parrot Gideon, who is two years old, but we now graduated with our macaw Aurora, who is a year and a half. Put it on pause with Gideon initially because he had some issues with some feather destruction. We weren't sure what it was, but it ended up being health related, so it's on pause right now. But good news is, is Gideon is in good shape right now and might be part of the free flight journey later. Well, Aurora was actually came to us as a rescue. She was surrendered to me. I do rescue a lot of birds or take in surrenders, um, rehabilitate them, train them, and then find them homes. And Aurora was one of those surrenders um, at about a year old. We found Vertrix with the DVD set of One Day Miracles by Googling bird training years ago when we were having issues with a conure. I actually weirdly target trained that conure in one day, this biting conure, after watching your videos. I had Sydney targeting, <laughs> and I thought he was just a lost cause. So that was my first experience, but then it was quite some time because we lost a bird that was clipped to a fly off, another collectus, shortly thereafter. And with the trauma of that, I actually didn't want birds anymore. So when we did start having birds again, when I got interested in birds again, it happened because I found bird tricks on YouTube and I started watching videos and I was like, hey, these are the people I found that DVD from. I didn't know they had a YouTube channel and I started kind of watching that and I'm like, oh, wow. They're, they do a lot of this different stuff, and I think the free flight videos are some of the first ones I saw. And then I just started watching all the videos talking about like why you shouldn't clip wings, and why it's safer not to, and the diet stuff, and all these things. I mean, honestly, y'all probably implanted in my brain when I found the DVD, and then when I found y'all on YouTube, and saw what you did with birds, and then experienced the effects of that, using it on my birds. By the time we were ready to sign up for free flight, it was like, well, who else would we use? All right, so think through what do you need to do to be successful. And I would start with just some easy warm ups, probably target. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> she gets distracted like if anyone was closer. What was that, Brandon? Mm -hmm. Good girl. Good girl. He was saying that she gets distracted if he's close. Oh, she'll be looking at me. Jennifer wanted to have the lifestyle we have right now which is um, you know, a flock of six um, we rescue. Having birds in captivity is tough. And so the whole thing is like, how do you create a situation where the birds are in captivity, yeah. where um, they get the best quality of life, but they can live with their people in a way that is harmonious um, and there's not chaos and the whole house gets destroyed. And then and, and she <laughs> was like, well, can you please watch these videos with me? Bertrix videos have been playing since then every weekend in the background it's like project birds free flight all that <laughs> basically though in a nutshell i was not a bird person until we started implementing the i showed bird him tricks methods it could be good put the birds on the seasonal feeding system subscribe to the patreons follow the instructions and suddenly we had a situation without me even knowing it where multiple birds were living there and Everything was harmonious and amazing. The biggest differences I see or have seen between training or working on free flight training with Gideon versus Aurora is honestly with Gideon, 95% of what we've worked on up to this point anyway, was just getting him desensitized, comfortable with like being handled by Brandon, who he wasn't super comfortable with at the time when we started getting him used to going into a carrier, which is necessary, just to go on trips, <laughs> working on getting his weight just right and just getting motivation just right. Um, and we actually got really far right before we had to pause. So that was a little bit um, upsetting. But with Aurora, it was completely different. She doesn't have like natural phobia of random things like Gideon did. She doesn't um, have any issues with any particular people. She's very open, she's friendly. So I thought it would be easier. <laughs> and in a way it was but not really, it was just like different difficulty. With her, it was, she is not a skilled flyer. She didn't properly fledge. She didn't fly when she was young. She lost all her flight feathers in her first big molt and had to regrow them. So she went through a period where she was crashing and losing all her confidence from that. So we had to almost rebuild her ability to fly and then try to turn that 
into confidence to try new things. So all of my focus was just on getting her flying in general, whereas with Gideon, he's an acrobat in the air and it's not even hard. So let's step you back like okay. two feet. Right there, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I have a feeling she's likely to do a big flight, yeah. and then we go grab her. Right. That's. I feel that same way. <laughs> Aurora. Nice. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Call her. Aurora. Aurora. <laughs> Just straight. Aurora. Turning. Turning. I got him. <laughs> Called it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right. You live, especially, you know, and you can see out here, like, if there were trees, she would land. Right. right. Oh, totally. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's unlikely we'll get a flight after that, but I always yeah, I like to try. I was just saying, try. she doesn't seem interested in treats at all. Yeah, she's done. <laughs> Let me try. And it's like, Let me try away. Nothing. <laughs> One thing that I found though, and the one time I got her outside going to the batting cages was that if I wasn't like right on and connected with her, if she was ready to go and I wasn't, she just would pass me up. She'd take off. Um, also just found, I think too, that she was, well, not related, but she was comforted by our presence. And that's probably the first place we saw that, that which is what ended up being a good thing when we got outside because it was the only thing that brought her back probably because treat motivation went out the window. But in the batting cage, we started to struggle with connection issues. Let's do it. I mean, let's max it out. Let's see what you do. She, I think. Okay. My only thing is she might miss me, so I'm going to wait for it not to be windy. She's not going to let me. <laughs> oh, she missed. Come on, come on. Wow, boomerang's back. Whoop. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you missed. And I still think we probably have those, so I'm excited to get home, get in a batting cage, and see where we stand um, after having this experience, if that's different, the same. She very quickly started to figure out how to use higher up places to land when she was struggling with learning to descend. So I'm not sure if she found them as like comfortable, safe places, or what the reasoning was initially, now that I think about it. But when she was first starting to recall to me, she would miss me then too. Now, I hadn't thought about it till now, but this was happening before the batting cage. Like if I started calling at longer distances down the hall across the house, she would fly over me, very similar to what we saw outside. And she would put herself in a windowsill behind me. I actually ended up using it as the training spot for descending. I used all of the areas that she would go without me wanting her to as teaching moments to practice recall off of. So turned into me sticking her in windowsills a lot <laughs> and asking her to fly down. So that's how we worked on descent. Marshall GPS made a huge difference for me mentally as like a backup thing. I don't think we relied on it at all, but I definitely loved the idea that like worst case scenario, we have that kind of like little backup system going. But what I thought was the coolest thing was how easy it was to put on because Brandon, who is not comfortable at handling birds, was able to put that thing on so quick and like easily that I was kind of shocked to be honest. I didn't think that he'd be able to do it so easily. We are for sure buying one when we get home. Yeah, we've already talked We already about discussed it. it. I'm like, we're buying one the second we get home because no matter where we fly going forward, we want to have that, that on there for our own safety, for her safety rather. Um, but now that we know for sure we can easily put it on and off, like we're not nervous. There was some nerves about us being able to do that on our own. I loved working with Dave. His experience and really the technical aspect of positive negative reinforcement and also honestly just, you know, keeping us focused. And I'm really bad at staying focused on something. So staying on point, doing the, going through the analysis um, every week, the video, and giving us clear cut directions on what to do next time was so helpful. I, I honestly, the experience was kind of surreal because I initially, when we started with Gideon, there was like a moment where it was like, I don't know if I just, because of like who he was, I was like, I need to please Dave. But it started turning more into like, okay, like I felt like there was a back and forth, which I really liked. I liked that he asked my opinion on, on stuff too. And like, did I think there was things I need to work on or how might I work on that? And go ahead and let's try that and see how that goes sort of thing. So what I liked about it was it gave me a lot of 
leeway or, or you know, the ability to not just take direction, but also experiment, see what you get from that, come back, get feedback. It was a lot of like more of a two way street, which I really appreciated because I am hard headed and I do like to try my way. And if it fails, it fails. And I'm like, yep, you were right. <laughs> Should have listened to him the first time. But I like the ability to try. Extreme patience. <laughs> yes, he has incredible patience. patience. Y'all were able to speak in a language that both you understood and I understood because you think mm -hmm. very logically, I think very emotionally. And so having someone training us that could speak both languages was helpful because I don't think that you necessarily hear the same way I do sometimes. So it's true. Yeah. I think communication was key <laughs> for us to be able to get to this point at all. So I liked the communication aspect. Communication was about. awesome. Yeah. I want to get home and start honestly working on improving the things that we learned here. Cause I saw day one outside, I went, okay, immediately seeing all the stuff I need to do when I get home. Um, which is great because I feel like I have a plan when I get home. I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to start doing. And I think for me, the struggle is going to be don't like just overdo it because I'm going to be so excited to get home and just like get her out every day and, you know, really work hard on it. But I'm super excited for the future of the Aurora. I cannot wait for the next free flight trip for her. I think it's going to be leaps and bounds different than this one in a really awesome way. So I can't wait for that. Day three was my favorite day because I got to see Aurora be a bird. I got to see her go to the sky and do what she's meant to do. And... I could see that the flying was self-reinforcing. I could see that she had a blast. And from day one to day three, I saw such massive progression when she got into the air, coming back towards us, mm -hmm. the muscles that developed, and just the progress was so crazy. It was just the biggest high. Um, it was also it was also really emotional um, just to see her be able to achieve that. Again, go, 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 go. I'm sure it go, go, can go, act go, like go, an anchor. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh, she's right there. Yeah. Keep trying. Yay. Oh, oh, yay. <laughs> Every time. Look at it go. Brandon, if you want to go into the road. Yeah, she's going to come down probably over there. Or on the car. Right there. Go, go, go. Get her here. She's still going around. Oh. Out of, out of muscle there. So that, that's what like, that is not a fly off, right? It's so just, she made a very obvious decision yes. to go, no thanks, and pass yeah. my hand, and yeah. then you too. But like, that's, that's her wanting to, to train, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, she obviously like waits for me to give her like this like verbal cue to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, she's trying. Aurora! Aurora, yes! 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 Come on! Come on! Come on! No. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Oh, meet her! Meet her! Meet her! Oh, so close! Oh, you chose so close! Dang it! That was great. I said it was probably exhilarating for her, but it was exhilarating for me too. I always wanted to see Aurora with um, a group of people hmm. um, launch and be in the air with other macaws doing their thing. And she did. And it was just like, yeah, it was just like, I mean, I don't, I'm not a crier, but <laughs> it was pretty intense. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. I think if so. I was going to pinpoint a moment in time, I have a photographic memory I was standing by myself on one end, everybody else launched the birds, um, and Aurora on the other end, and Ren was over by the car, so I was by myself out here, and I really hope someone got a shot of that, because all, what was it, like five or something birds, Ooh. maybe six, because I don't know if Cressy was out, but like all the birds got sent at the exact same time, and they went two, 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 like right over me. It was just a and as a bird. bird person, I was like, this is so cool, but then I was like, hold on, where's Aurora? <laughs> I like seeing her take off on her own today too. Yeah. The other birds flying past and her just joining them, knowing that's what she should do was super Ugh. cool because it was instinctual and just natural. See her. She didn't have to. She could have just been like, I don't buy. I mean, we knew she wasn't affected by the birds flying on day one. Jinx flew right by her and she just was like, why, why are you there? But when he flew by on day four, she was like, I'm joining. And so that was a totally different mindset we saw from day one to day four for her. So that was cool. Just... I believe she had fun. I. 
<laughs> Thank you. See, I said it the other day. I know. It. I'm like, don't put human emotions. I think she had a good time. If she too. didn't, we had a blast. So, <laughs> still win-win. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was for Aurora at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think she got something really special yes. out of it. Yeah. She could not do any of the last three things you saw her do. You're amazing. <laughs>